Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. This week at work, I needed to be able to produce an infographic for a piece of research that I've been working on. In the past, where I've needed an infographic, I've had access to a graphic designer and they've been able to do that kind of artistic side of putting together an infographic. So something that's more visual than just some charts and a report and the things that we might normally do as a researcher or analyst. This time around, I decided to see whether it's something with the new tools that are out there that I could do myself. In the video today, we are going to look at four different tools and do a bit of a compare and contrast between them with particular focus on some AI bits and pieces that are attached to a couple of them. So the four tools that we're looking at, Canva, Vengage, Pictochart, and Vizme. So let's take a look at each of these. We're not going to actually produce the infographic, it's going to take a bit long, but I'm going to give you a summary of each and where I've kind of settled on what I would use and what I would recommend for you to use if you needed to produce an infographic. First up we have Canva, and Canva is probably the best known and biggest of all of these tools, and it does a whole lot more. So as well as being able to do infographics, it can do all sorts of different design tasks, and there's a good chance that you may have used it for something before, whether it was for slides or documents or presentations or other things. We can see here when we search for infographic, we have a whole page of different templates and that's something where we jump between these different tools that is pretty similar. If we jump over to Vengage in their infographic section you can see very very similar and without kind of zooming in on any particular one we can see very similar stuff. For Visme we can see slightly different layout. They've got some templates but they've also got templates grouped so we've got things like timelines, processes, comparisons, hierarchies, maps. So their set of templates has a bit more structure to it. Last one is Pictochart. And Pictochart, certainly in terms of their Google SEO, if you search for infographics and if you search for AI infographics, this seems to come up towards the top more often than the others. And again, we can see whole page, lots and lots of different templates. We've also got this button, Generate AI Infographic. So when we click on the Generate AI Infographic, we get something that's a bit like a wizard. So we can type in a topic, we can upload a document, we can choose our different types. So we've got infographic, newsletters, charts, various different things here. So using the AI tool there, if we just give it a sentence, it will just concoct some data. So the data we've got here is not real data, and we can see that it gives us a variety of different options of how to present it, but that's actually not real data. I just gave it a one sentence about AI use in GP training, which is what I am actually going to produce a real infographic on, and it produces these. If we go back a step, that was on the chart, it's a one pager, I tried list, I've tried a couple of these others, they all seemed a bit small. I also tried uploading a document and I felt like it just got a little bit overwhelmed then. So whilst it seems very attractive to be able to use AI prompting to produce your infographic, I think what you probably will expect from an infographic is more complex than what it can produce. For all of these, I am also on just the free plan, which does also have some limitations as well. So that was the picture chart AI, but what I think is actually better is if we just pick a template, and I think for any of these tools, this is how I would go about it, and then populate it with the data that I have and want to present. Here, instead, what I've done is I've just picked a template, and then from that template, we can see that it just produces a page which has these elements in it, a little bit longer longer than those ones that it's doing generatively. We can see up the side here we can add pages, delete pages, resize them as well. And then we've just got the different kinds of items. We've got a good number of different charts. So if we want to put in a chart somewhere, then we can just select our spot, select what kind of chart, enter the data to be able to put it. We can see there's a chart there for us to drag around as we would like. And this is still going to take a bit of manual work. I don't think any tools are there yet in terms of the generative AI. I kind of wanted to demo it and certainly it's not a knock against Pictochart. I think Pictochart is probably one of the better tools here, but just really illustrative of AI is not quite 
there yet for this stuff. So that's all of our different graph selections. We can change the design components, the colors. We can upload our own bits and pieces. Got all sorts of different graphics. And then if we are on the pro version, there's uh, even more. So we've got icons and pictures and various different bits and pieces that we can add. Illustrations, photos, we can do searches here. So it is actually pretty complete. We can see here a whole lot of templates, similar kind of vibe. Click on a template, starts creating, opens up a new, window and down the left hand sides we can see we've got our elements we've got shapes text icons images charts they actually lock away their bubble scatter plots and their word clouds in the premium so each one also locks different things away in premium we can see with picture chart they haven't locked their graphs away but they lock some other features so we saw the icons i think the ability to save above a certain resolution i think there's a few other bits and pieces that they lock down instead so each of these much of a muchness you can see if we go with visme again we jump in it opens it up and then we edit and we add our things so stats and figures data here's our various different charts automatic negative points for 3d donuts and 3d pies shouldn't be even giving people an option of those kind of graph atrocities but other than that same kind of vibe slightly different design features i think if you are doing this for a more serious commercial application then vengage and visme i think some of their designs i'm sure you could get the other two to make designs that look like this by default they seem to be just a little bit softer and more i'll say cartoony maybe that's not even the right description all of them have the ability to collaborate which is really nice but that does generally rely on having to upgrade so the last one we haven't looked at just yet is canva and so i left canva to last two reasons one is that it's not just dedicated to this and i guess these aren't i mean vengage you can see you can do resumes and white papers that you can do other design stuff here as well in fact, actually video as well. So quite a few different bits and pieces. Canva is that much bigger, that much older. So I think it does have a lot more features, has a lot more users as well. If we go into Magic Studio, and again, I'm just on the free plan, so I don't have access to be able to show you all of the cool bits and pieces. We can see there the Magic Write is under the Pro. So they've got generative AI. The way that they've done it, though, I think is a little bit different with picked a chart where you're just trying to give a prompt and make it produce a certain thing here i think you've got the magic edit and the magic grab you've got these ai editing tools you've also when you're going up into the paid mode we've got dali so we've got the ability to within it produce gen ai images if we can't find the exact image that we want a few other bits and pieces not quite sure we need anime art but lots of different extra cool ai stuff if we go back and the nice thing with Canva is you get all the user uploaded templates. Downside is you do need Pro to be able to get in and edit them. You can see lots and lots of different. And in fact, these ones are maybe a little bit less cartoony. Big question, which one of these should you pick? And whilst there's no right answer, and for different people in different use cases, maybe that answer varies. The main things that I would consider are do you have collaborators who are already using one of these tools in which case i don't think any of them are so vastly superior to the others that you should use that otherwise the two that i would come down to would be picture chart picture chart is nice in that it is really just dedicated to this kind of work and that just makes it maybe a little bit more streamlined and simple than canva where canva there's just so much going on on the flip side canva does give you so much more price wise i think it's actually a better deal than these others and canva does let you do all of the stuff the others can as well so if you're looking for charts in canva you need to come to elements and then we need to come down to charts it's got a good range of charts as well if you look at older comparison blogs comparing these one of the things that they sometimes say is oh it's not not as many charts in canva but really all the main ones are there and i'm sure if there was something that wasn't you could probably either produce it in r and just copy it over as an image or there would be ways around it so this particular template that i've grabbed is one that i can play with without the pro version and whilst the canva interface does take a little bit of getting used to and it's maybe not quite as intuitive as these other ones it's not a big learning curve and there's so many good resources on youtube for it because it has got that many more users so ultimately i think for most people my recommendation is to come and do this in canva and then the second place 
just being picked to chart. Not to say that the other two are bad, but I think just for someone, if you are just doing this as a sole creator, even as an employee, but particularly if you're doing it on your own rather than part of the company's infrastructure, then it's just easier, cheaper, and nice that you can just do your one month. And in fact, you can just do your tri-pro for 30 days and that might be enough for you. So I would love to see other people's efforts on infographics. If you had to produce infographics for something that you do, please link up, give us some comments in the chat or send some links, even email it to me. I'm just really curious to see infographics, particularly if you've come at it from a statistician, researcher, data scientist side rather than a designer side. I do have a few stories and a few recommendations about working with designers and that's going to be a video for another day. That's going to be it for me for today though. I hope this was helpful. Good luck with your production of infographics and I will see you really soon with more videos on AI stats research and random stuff.